Today I'm going to be showing you how to create a YouTube subscriber counter that works off of Wi-Fi for only $10. You can choose up to three channels. It's an absolute simple build to make. Just four wires, two components, and we're done. As you can see here, and a little nice 3D printed case. However, you don't need anything 3D printed. You can just have the two pieces and do what you want. And this is what applies the power. Any kind of micro USB from power bank, phone charger, whatever is 5 volt, whatever is USB. It takes a micro USB, powers everything up. So enough talking. And let's get started. All right, guys. So the components we're going to be needing are basically three components or two components. It's up to you. Um, it was so cheap that I decided to add another component. You might ask why. Well, I'll tell you why not. Uh, this is a humidity and temperature sensor, so it's pretty cool. Uh, I'll have two separate codes for this, which you could use, one without and one with, if you wanted to add this along with us. You can go ahead and do that. However, in this video, we're not going to be adding this guy just yet, so we're going to put him to the side. So overall here, the total cost is 10 bucks, actually a little bit less than $10, but like $9.80. This thing here is around $3.40. This thing here is the most expensive piece, which is 6 bucks. So all you really need is these two things right here and some wires and that's it. So in this part of the video, we're going to be assembling it and putting it all together. As you can see, I 3D printed some parts here. Uh, these parts I found on Thingiverse. I'll leave a link to them down below. Um, I just, you know, basically, I found the smallest, fastest things to print out. And it was actually, it came out pretty nice. So uh, this is a screen holder, uh, which is has a little swivel action going to it. So it's pretty cool. And this is just a little box for this guy, just to make it just a little bit more nice here. So let's go ahead and get started here. So one of the first things you're going to want to do is we're going to get this screen. This is a 1602 LCD screen, and it's very important to get the one that I have linked below because that's the one that will work with the code. So take that into consideration from right now. Uh, this thing. Also, these, there's many of them online. There's many different kind of flavors. There's all kinds of crazy stuff. Try to get the ones that I'm using and linking down below so you don't run into any issues here. All right, so let's talk about this screen. So first, as you can see here, it has all these pins and they're connected to this little thingy right here, which has four pins out. So that's very good. This Instead of connecting every single pin here, we're just going to connect four. Some of these, you just have to actually access and talk to this screen through all these pins, which is a nightmare. So this is good in that perspective. And as you can see here, these pins would be just taken up to here, which is going to be very bad if you're going to use this. So what I've done is I've just cut the pins off here and that's it. It was just good to go. So let's go ahead and take a look here. And all we're going to need is just four wires. So as you can see, we have SCL, SDA, VCC and ground. Obviously, so we're going to power off the five volt. And this is where the data is going to go through to the, the, the LCD here. Now, as you can see, there's a little potentiometer right here and I'll show you what that's used for. Uh, some of these screens, when you boot them up, you just see squares instead of writing or anything. And what you do is just play with that potential. And I'll show you that once we set that up. So let's go ahead and get started here. So here we are only going to need four places, which are very important here. And what we're going to need is D1 and D2 and then ground and this one right there. This little symbol is very important to put power here, not on 3 volt, because this is all over 3 volt. VN is obviously voltage in. You can't get anything. So when we powered off with a 5 volt, you know, uh, charger, power bank, whatever, this thing takes a 3.3 volt or you'll fry it. So there's an onboard regulator which gives it 3.3 volts. However, everything else in here, 3.3 volts, except that port right there, which will be the raw input coming from the power bank or your phone charger or whatever you want to connect to it, your PC, it'll go straight to their five volt power, this guy. Very simple. So let's go ahead and get started here. All right, so I'm going to start with the power here. So I'm going to get a black and a red wire. And this is a silicone wire I got from a flight controller I have laying around. And it's going to be just amazing wire here. Super flexible and just awesome. So I'm going to take red and black for power and ground. All right, so I'm left with these here. You could use any size wire you want, any color you want. However, for the sake of, you know, so for you guys, for easier to follow along, I'm gonna use uh, color coded wires here. All right, so we have our red wire, which is gonna be the positive. So let's go ahead and solder this guy right now. And what I like to do is pinch these wires and we're gonna add some solder and solder them on. 
All right, so I've gone ahead and prepared the wires here. And what I want to do is I'm actually going to solder it inwards like this because the case, if you take a look at it, the holes are, you know, towards the inside. So it doesn't come out and then have to, you know, we don't want to cause extra stress on the wire where we don't have to. So that's what we're going to do here. And as you can see, there's the pad that we want. It's called UV or VV. It's basically USB voltage. That's what it's trying to tell you, UV. So we're just going to go ahead and solder that guy right there. So just make sure the tip is clean. And let's go ahead and put this guy. All right, so we got our power wire in. Let's go ahead and get our ground here. And we'll just take ground from next to it. Keep it nice and clean. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, that's beautiful. And now we need D1 and D2. So let's put, move these a little bit to the side. And for D1, I'm gonna use blue. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna go inwards here. So yeah, let's just make sure you guys can see everything. So D1, D2. Okay, that's in good. Now we're just gonna do D2. There we go. So now everything's in, beautiful. And we're halfway done really. So let's go ahead and put this case on top. Cause now what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually solder these wires to the screen. So let's just go ahead and do that. Make sure we got the right orientation. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to wrap these wires together. <clears throat> I think it'll be very nice. So since they're silicone, they could totally do this and get away with it beautifully. We don't want it too much to where it starts curling against each other. So as you can see here, I'm pushing these back a little bit. And now let's go ahead and make sure we get the right orientation here. And we're just going to route these guys. All right, beautiful. I did have to use a hot air gun. Very nice and easy to kind of get everything to squish in kind of nice, as nice as possible here. So you might have to do that if you're going to print the same kind of setup here. I'm right, just making sure I have this correct. These holes I made, it doesn't come with the 3D printed part. So what I'm going to use is I'm going to use M3 nylon screws and or yeah, and just nuts and then just hold it into place. It comes, it'll be just a lot nicer here this way. So let's go ahead and get the LCD here. And what I'm going to do is it's just such a beautiful fit on this that I don't even have to use screws in the corner. So just my uh, printer's miscalibration worked beautifully for me here. And all you gotta do is put this guy here and ta-da. So it's looking beautiful already. And in theory, this is supposed to be like this and we have a nice setup. So let's go ahead and start routing the wires now. All right, so let's push them here because that's where we want them. And let's see the amount of wires we need. We don't, want, we don't want too much wire, but we also want enough to kind of, you know, give us a little bit of freedom. So I think what I'm going to do is right here. Um, it's about, I don't know. It's a little, it's about nine centimeters, I think. Yeah, nine centimeters. So, all right. So D1 was blue. Or let's just leave those alone. Let's start with the power here. So what we want to do is we want to grab this guy, zoom in a little bit, and take a look here. So we have ground right there. So let's go ahead and put the ground, solder the ground into place. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add a little solder on the wire and on the pin that's coming out from the LCD here. So. Beautiful. Now let's do this. This is why I always say clean the solder tip. All right, so that's beautiful. So let's go ahead and set up the ground now. All you gotta do is just hold it on top of each other and touch them. Let's 
take a look here. Beautiful. That's not going anywhere. So let's do VCC. It's going to be the same process here. Make sure you guys can see everything. All right, that was nice. Let's take a look. Nothing's gonna be touching anytime soon. All right, so let's just take a look here. We made the blue wire into D1. So D1 is going to be going to SCL. So as you can see here, I've done this wire and it's a bit too long. So I'm just gonna trim it down a bit. So we said blue is what is, blue is D1 and D1 is gonna go to SCL, which is that first one right there. Try to keep it steady as long as possible because it doesn't dry right away. And uh, it'll tend to move a bit, the, the wire, while you're soldering it. All right, so now, last but not least, <clears throat> I have the code already prepared on this, so it should work right out of the box. All right, so now pin D2 is going to go to SDA. All right. So that's very nice and very beautiful. Let's put this whole thing together now. All right, guys, so now let's go ahead and finalize this a little bit more. And what I want to do is I'm going to grab some, basically just some M2, M3 screws here and install them through this guy. So let's just go ahead and do it like this. And I've cut these holes in the plastic here myself. And what you can do is you could use the, you know, those nylon nuts for our quadcopters. And I'll leave a link to those down below if you if you don't know what I'm talking about. So the way I cut the 3D printed parts is just with an X-Acto knife. I just kept spinning around a circle. Well, not exact. Yeah, I think it works with an X-Acto knife also. But what I really used was a box cutter. And I actually installed this backwards, that bottom piece. So all we got to do is just install this on the bottom here. This way the bottom part plate won't go anywhere. We could do it backwards too if you want to put the knot on the bottom. You could do that also. So there we go. Now we just get a little double-sided tape here. And uh, we just tape it right on the legs here. So just like that. And it should be beautiful. So let's actually do that now. Alright, so I've added the double-sided tape. Let's go ahead and remove one side. Okay, and how do we want it? Let's see. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap this a little bit more just so it can actually bend on itself. Yep, there we go. Beautiful. And there we go, that's it. It's this little guy. Just take them anywhere, place them down. Let's go ahead and apply some power here and see how well he does. All right, so it's connecting. So let me show you something actually very important also, which is that potentiometer that I was talking about in the back. And again, for, forget the beginning cycle here. It's getting the data and mixing it up with the previous so the previous was actually zero because it had no data and it adds the, you know, it just does two numbers there, but you know, I'll have that fixed in a newer version, but there we go. After it cycles, it just works beautiful and it updates basically live real time. So after the first cycle, actually uh, stop, go get the data again, make sure if someone increased in a subs. All right. So for example, I have Joshua Bardwell's page open 
and I just unsubscribed. Let's take a look at what happens. So the way I program it is on the left of the subscriber count, you should get, there we go, he just lost a subscriber. So that was me. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to subscribe again and it should go get the data. If we got it before it went to data, if we subscribe before it went and get the data, we should see that plus one. If not, we'll see it on the next cycle. Oh, there we go, it got it. So that, that was us, we, minus one, plus one. Absolutely beautiful, absolutely cheap, and just something super awesome. Now, what I'm thinking of doing next is we'll push all this data to the left, and I'll make another script for this, or maybe a different video, because the next video is going to be into the programming, or just how to install the program on this. It's pretty simple, but some people might not know how to put their wireless password and stuff into the program. It's just absolutely easy. Have it just, you know, you put your... Uh, wireless name and then the password and it'll do everything by itself. It's just absolutely simple And I'll show you how to put different channels if you want to watch different channels. Uh, you can also do that So what I'm thinking of doing is pushing this data to the left in a later on video and putting you know The humidity and temperature reading here on the right with that little sensor. I showed you in the beginning of the video um, And I think it should be pretty cool because that sensor is like two dollars or three dollars So the total would be around like 13 bucks here. So, you know, um well, that's going to conclude it for this video, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. I know it's something different, but uh, I really wanted one, and um, I just wanted to make my own, and I thought I might as well make this video and share it with you guys. So uh, I really hope you guys enjoyed it, and if you guys have any questions or any suggestions, feel free to let me know, and I will see you next time. See you guys. Take care.